we just got a brand new interview with Todd Howard talking about Starfield. And this was definitely a big interview. There was a ton of details revealed, and even we got the snippet of Fallout 5. Um, but to the other thing you said, yes, our, you know, Elder Scrolls 6 is, is in pre-production, and, you know, we're going to be doing Fallout 5 after that. So our slate's pretty, pretty full going forward for a while. We have some other projects that we, we look at um, from time to time as well. It seems like this was a rather impromptu interview. Ryan McCaffrey, the executive editor at IGN, basically just called Todd Howard and recorded it and then asked him a bunch of the pressing questions following the Bethesda showcase and Todd Howard just answered all of these questions very honestly. So going through what was revealed and what was announced here, Todd Howard describes that he's excited for these showcases when nothing ends up leaking beforehand. Not sure if that was a bit of a shot at some of the leaks that did occur between the images and of course the reset era post by Heavy008, but in general the Bethesda team is overjoyed with the fan reaction to the Starfield reveal. It has been very positive thus far. Obviously, there's always going to be some controversy because it's a Bethesda game, but in general, Bethesda fans seem very happy. And they immediately get into some talk on procedural generation. As of course, if Bethesda are adding 1,000 explorable planets into Starfield, there's going to be a healthy amount of procedural generation among those planets. Todd Howard describes how it's important to keep in mind they have always done procedural generation in Bethesda Game Studios games, and really how once you have a good procedural generation system, it doesn't really matter if you're making one big planet, a hundred planets, or even a thousand planets, and even how they'll have more to discuss around procedural generation at a later point, so perhaps we'll have a deep dive into how this will look across all of those various planets in Starfield. But then we get one of those quotes that will probably settle a lot of people's nerves and get them excited about this game again. But I should also add that we have done more handcrafting in this game like content wise than any game we've done we're over 200,000 lines of dialogue so we still do a lot of handcrafting and if people just want to do like what they're used to in our games and follow a main quest and do the quest lines you're you're gonna see what you'd kind of expect from us but then you have this whole other part of well I'm just gonna wander this planet and it's going to provide some gameplay and some random content and those kind of things, kind of like a Daggerfall would right. uh, if you go way back. So yeah, although Starfield will have a healthy and very heavy amount of procedural generation as you're exploring a thousand planets, it also will feature the most handcrafted content out of any Bethesda Game Studios game ever. Starfield is going to feature four main cities, with New Atlantis, the one we've actually seen, being the largest of these, and actually being the largest city Bethesda has ever built in a game, and a few minor details like how you'll be able to work on your ship here and it's the HQ of Constellation. But the more impactful quote or really reveal from this as far as the handcrafted content goes is that 200 lines of dialogue. That is an absurd amount of dialogue. It was revealed earlier today that Starfield will have a silent protagonist. Fallout 4 had a voice protagonist in 111 thousand lines of dialogue. So Starfield's going to have no protagonist talking and about double the amount of dialogue. That means that NPCs are going to have a lot to say in Starfield. This will literally be an unprecedented scale as far as talking to people goes when it comes to Bethesda games, the most ever. And Bethesda Game Studios describes how they're going to try and make it a bit more obvious what is handcrafted and what is procedurally generated. So seemingly certain planets will be procedurally generated and you'll be somewhat able to tell, but they don't really expand as to how that will be done. And also in this process, there's been some interesting considerations, like what is fun about an ice ball in space, that being some of those ice planets. Then we get into what they've described or what they're going to do gameplay wise, but they really break it down as some people may settle certain planets just because you like the view. That's the type of game this might be. Maybe it has a bunch of cool moons or other planets that you could see from the surface and you'll really enjoy being able to look at that. So that's where you'll be able to set up your outpost. When they started working on Starfield immediately after Fallout 4, the two things they started working on first were the procedural generation technology and space combat. They describe how your ship will have some FTL-like power systems. So that's where you can redistribute where power from the reactor is going to the various subsystems of the ship. So you can boost things like your engines to go faster, more power into weapons to deal more damage, or of course shields for better protection. There's also a grav drive here. The grav drive is going to basically allow you to jump and get out of combat quickly. The pacing of combat is described as being a bit slower though. It is dogfighting, but it's not going to be the fastest paced dogfighting. And Todd Howard describes how the pacing is a bit faster than Mech Warrior. But also he gets into how space isn't just going to be about dogfighting. There's a lot more you could do up there. But it's not just dogfighting, like the ship stuff includes 
you see it in the video, you can dock with other ships, you can disable them, you can dock, you can board it. There's actually some quests that involve that. Um, you can steal the ship. There's dialogue in space. There's star stations you can visit. There's smuggling. There's, pi it's, you know, all the things that we would want. Um, and we'll be showing some more of that later, but it's a, it's a good chunk of, of gameplay that we think is really fun when it comes to playing this type of sci-fi game. For me personally, this sounds amazing. Smuggling and stealing ships in particular seems like it'll be a blast to do. It makes it seem more likely that you will be able to have multiple spaceships in Starfield, but also just being able to properly act like a pirate in your role-playing game feels amazing. I mean, who doesn't want to at least sometimes be a space pirate? But at the same time, maybe in tougher battles, the approach isn't necessarily ship-to-ship -ship combat, but trying to board the other ship as quickly as possible and dealing with the threat that way. On the topic of background, he describes how there's about 20 options to choose from when it comes to backgrounds right now, but that number will probably change somewhat. You can think of these like classes, and we have the skill bonuses you can get. We saw that in the gameplay trailer. So you get bonuses to three skills, or kind of the first tier of three skills. But there's also going to be a variety of other options in the game, and some of these being roleplay related options. We saw some dialogue from the trailer also. But even extending to things outside of dialogue, like crafting and even just manipulating people and leadership components will be implemented. The start of Starfield is going to be pretty fixed and set for everyone. The game has multiple step out moments though, and they describe how some of the early step out moments are a bit more handcrafted. The first time seeing a planet from space, seeing the surface of a planet for the first time. And as far as the main story goes, because we didn't get a ton of that from the trailer, he describes how we're going to be working with Constellation. Constellation is looking for mysteries of the universe and even looking for old Earth artifacts. Throughout the trailer, of which I'm working on a massive breakdown right now, you could actually see a ton of old Old Earth artifacts, whether it be Terracotta Warriors, the original Apollo 11 lander, the Opportunity rover on Mars, but even the artifacts from this mysterious device or location we could see in game. We find these artifacts and we don't know their origin. That is really the quest we're going to be starting on. Starfield is going to be about 20% longer than their past games, especially when it comes to the main quest. So if, let's say, previously they aim for the main quest to be about 25 hours, and let's say Fallout 4 and Skyrim, Starfield will be about 30 to 40 hours for just the main quest. And the side content here, of course, is going to be massive. And when it comes to modding, Todd Howard had this to say, which gets me very, very excited. Certainly, we're going to be doing extra content for this game, and we love our modding community. We actually think this game for our modding community is going to be a dream, um, because there's so much they could do. Starfield on paper has a lot of mod ability. There's a lot of systems modders can dive into, but you also have to wonder if there'll be any extension to the modding tools, console mods, etc. for Starfield and how that can evolve with the game also. As it has been heavily speculated, Todd Howard does confirm that you cannot fly ships straight down onto the planet. So this cutscene you see of landing a ship is the transition point from space to on planet. And he basically describes how being on the surface is one reality and being in space is a different reality. They looked at actually engineering the connection point of transitioning from space to on the planet, and instead of spending all the resources and time on that, just decided to actually make each of them great in their own way. And of course, the massive reveal he just dropped at the end of this one is how the Elder Scrolls 6 is in pre-production right now, and after that, they're going to be working on Fallout 5, also mentioning how they would love to get these games out faster. Not exactly shocking, but this does confirm that Starfield's the only Starfield game we'll have for a while, unless they start co-developing AAA games in tandem. Overall, I actually thought this was a massive interview, some really big reveals and very interesting details about the game. I know some of you might be wondering at this point, wait, you haven't posted a trailer breakdown, what about that? I'm actually editing it right now, the video is going to be nearly an hour long and I have it all recorded, I'm just editing together, which naturally on an hour video is going to take a while, so you can get subscribed for that. But also earlier today was the Xbox and Bethesda Extended Showcase, which did have a few notable and interesting points, like an interview with Pete Hines, when asked about why Starfield and Redfall were delayed. He mentions how the last two years have been pretty challenging from a development standpoint, they've been working largely remote, and not many people at Bethesda are back in the office even still, as well as they want the teams to fully realize these high quality games, which was a great marketing line, as well as he can't really pin Starfield down to being just about one thing. Bethesda Game Studios games are massive sandboxes, and the way he talks, it really seems like Starfield will be a bigger sandbox than any of the past games. You could do your own thing, whether it be building outposts and exploring the world, or doing the story and joining 
factions. Each player's experience with Starfield will be different. The story will be a guided path to Starfield, but there's a lot of other ways to experience this if you don't want to go that route. Items in the Starfield world are still going to be a real thing. You can go into a place, pick up all of the various things like past Bethesda games. Similar to what Todd Howard describes, Pete Hines reiterates that you can run in and steal a ship, shoot all the crew on it, and then take off in that ship. All the ships are customizable and it's not just cosmetics. And there'll be trade-offs in this. When you make a certain part of your ship good, you may be forfeiting some other aspect. And this isn't going to be cheap. You're going to have options as to whether or not you want to buy the parts yourself, just using credits, or even just get the materials to craft these for your ship yourself. They talk a bit about 25 years of Fallout and how Bethesda is aware. Bethesda didn't start Fallout. They don't want to pay homage only to the Bethesda Fallouts, but to New Vegas and the original Fallouts as well. And how Fallout 76 is in a truly remarkable place compared to where it was. They talk a bit about Redfall. Is Redfall just left for dead? He basically says how the combat footage alone will make it seem similar, but when it all comes together, it does feel like something different. The skills and abilities and team-focused gameplay with defined roles make it feel distinctive, and at the same time, it's going to still have that DNA of an arcane game, even despite the fact that it is a multiplayer game, and you can get that arcane story and play the game by yourself. We saw a bit of Pentiment also, not from Bethesda, but Obsidian's narrative-driven RPG, what's kind of a murder mystery game of sorts, and it sounds super interesting, and this description got me more hyped than the original trailer. It'll take place in 16th century Bavaria, which is going to be a part of the Holy Roman Empire. Your main character is a painter that is trying to unravel scandals and murders, and it actually takes place across 25 years. Time is a relevant element of this game. They describe how at points you'll meet somebody who's a little kid, just a few years old, and as the game progresses you'll see them grow up and even get married. They show up some very interesting and crazy features, highlighting a paper over a candle to see some text, reassembling something that's like a plate or a plaque to find whatever it does unveil. And the last major thing that was of note to me was we did get a nice preview of Stalker 2 totally new trailer and release target, which was honestly super shocking. They're shooting for a 2023 release date, but even further, they give a bit of background as to what's going on with some of their developers. But overall, yeah, that's a huge update from Todd Howard on Starfield, but also some of the other things, the notable things, at least what I found notable, from the Xbox and Bethesda extended showcase. Definitely a good day for Starfield news. Again, I will have this full breakdown coming shortly, so you can look forward to that. But as always, again, I thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed this one, and I hope to see you all next time. Later.